question is from Brady Thomas too. What are your thoughts on Jefferson curls? Good, bad, neither? That's the one exercise that I could guarantee if you were to go into a gym and start doing them, <laughs> oh, you, everybody, mayhem. everybody would freak out, yeah, right? Yeah. It, so this, if you don't know what this is, it's literally a movement where you're holding a weight and you are bending over the what you would think is the wrong way. Like rounded spine. Totally rounding the spine all the way down and then coming all the way you're up. You're basically lifting with your skeleton. Yeah. Now, here's the thing with exercises. Uh, there's a hierarchy of them. Some are more effective than others. Some are more high risk than others. I would say a Jefferson curl is a high risk exercise. Mm -hmm. Does that make it uh, an exercise that has zero value? No. There is some value to a Jefferson curl for somebody that's got phenomenal stability in their spine and good controller spine because it does exercise the muscles that articulate the spine from extension, flexion, to extension, but it has to be done really, really controlled. And I would never do a Jefferson curl uh, with a lot of weight. Well, and we've the type of clients that we would receive. Uh, I've never ever taught a Jefferson. Well, curl. I've Same. never taught one. Uh -huh. Yeah, because there's there's way too many other things that I need to address before I would before they could even do it properly, much less gain a lot of value from it. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean there is not a, a a gymnast or athlete out there that has got this stability, the strength, the control, the flexibility to do that. Um, and any any exercise that you can perform safely and controlled can be a very good exercise. So mm -hmm. if they have but uh, ninety nine point nine percent of you listening uh, could probably live without a Jefferson the rest of your life and and still build an amazing physique physique and work on a ton of other things that you should be doing. So uh, I wouldn't teach it. Yeah, I and I would think a prerequisite for that. I've actually when I attended the FRC course, I knew maybe one or two people there that I, that probably could pull it off because they had that kind of articulation and control over each individual uh, spine. And yeah. so it was like, uh, I mean, they had that kind of access and control. You don't see that. That's very uncommon. You have to train your way there uh, in order to then even load uh, your your back with that type mm. of, uh, you, you know, that type of angle and everything else. So it's, it's very, it could potentially be a very dangerous exercise, but there is a way to, to lead up and, to it. And what makes it dangerous is most people just don't have the control and the stability. Most people, if they did a Jefferson curl, what would support them on the way down was the, were the was their end range of motion with their spine. Yeah. And that's where you can run into problems. You know, I remember learning this lesson uh, as a, a maybe trainer 10 years in the business. Because when I first became a trainer, there were literally exercises that I was taught that were bad. They would say to me, don't do behind the neck pull downs. Terrible exercise. Don't do behind the neck overhead presses. Bad exercise. Real bad for the shoulders. It'll, right. it'll always hurt somebody. Don't go all the way down with the bench press. Very bad for the shoulder. Don't go don't go below parallel for a squat. Totally bad for the back and the hips and, and everything else. Later on, I started experimenting with these exercises. And the way I experimented with them is the first one I did was a behind the neck pull down. And I just started real, real light. And I did it in a way to where I could control the position. I could do it in a way where it didn't hurt. And I felt like I was connecting to the muscles. And then as I got stronger doing it, I just noticed greater ranges of motion in my back and my shoulders. I got stronger. Same thing with the behind the neck shoulder press and going all the way down with the bench press. I noticed that if I treated them wisely and I was I took my time, allowed my body to connect to these exercises, that because they were new and because they were different, because I was working in ranges of motion I wasn't used to, I would gain from that. I would gain strength. I would gain muscle. So you know, when I hear somebody say, uh, this exercise, never do it. It's bad. Um, you know, I, I'm always very, very skeptical. I have yet to see exercises that I really think I look at and I go, nobody should do those. Mm -hmm.